Galnet News, your galaxy in focus. 2nd of March, 3302. Our top story today comes from Commander Lord Zoltan, Professor D. Luffy, head of research at Bond Hub in the Varati system, has released a statement about the station's need for meta-alloys, in which he said, My researchers are ready to receive as many meta-alloys as the community can deliver. We're certain we can repeat the success of the Obsidian Orbital Engineers and reverse the malfunctioning plaguing so many stations in the bubble. My colleagues and I understand the concerns about harvesting meta-alloys from the barnacles, but this plague is affecting millions of people, and it seems the meta-alloys have been given to us specifically as a cure. We do not condone the destruction of barnacle sites, and we are prepared for the possibility that something bad could happen as a result of using the meta-alloys in this way, but we must balance the need for caution against the needs of humanity. So, please, bring your meta-alloys to us, and let us do the rest. While much has been made about the discovery of the alien life forms known as barnacles in the Pleiades Nebula, some have been quick to point out that the meta-alloys so highly sought after to overcome technical difficulties and repair malfunctioning stations might be distributing alien life throughout the civilized galaxy or harming this alien life in some way. There is no conclusive evidence either way, but until the mysterious technological plague is cured, the stations around the galaxy continue their appeals for meta-alloys in the face of various stark warnings, and at the present time, no research group is close enough to a discovery to dictate the use of these special alloys. And this report from the Interstellar Press via Commander Gan. Optimism has turned to dismay as slave trading resumed in the Uabooth system at Fleming Station and J.G. Ballard Colony days after it was declared emancipated by Ashling Javal. It has changed nothing, stated leading humanist Luke Augustine, waiting for Sentient Life magazine. Although the intentions were good, this action has simply supercharged the slave trade there rather than stop it. He continued to say, Giving money to slavers would only ever encourage more slavery. If we really want to abolish this vile trade in Uy Booth, we must support abolitionist governments like Uy Booth Unionist Party and remove regimes that support slavery directly. It may not be glamorous or lucrative, but it is the only way to end this barbaric practice in Uy Booth and promote true freedom for those unfortunate people. From the Federation now. For the past six years, the Federation has used a pair of customized Saud Kruger Narwhal liners, upgraded variants of the successful Beluga liner, as the personal vessels of the Federal President. Last year, one of these vessels was lost in a tragic accident. The remaining vessel was retired on the 28th of February this year. Bexley Jones, a spokeswoman for President Zachary Hudson, said, it is of the utmost importance that the ship bearing the callsign Starship One can function as a mobile base of operations for the President, providing him with everything he needs while off-planet, in addition to offering total safety. Given the Beluga's primary designation as a passenger vessel, we have decided that it is unable to meet these demands. Jones confirmed that the remaining Narble will be replaced with a pair of modified Farragut battlecruisers, a mainstay of the Federal Navy, the formidable vessels are equipped with an extensive array of heavy weaponry and are capable of transporting multiple Federal corvettes and a large F-63 Condor squadron. She went on to say, In these dangerous times, it is essential that the presidential vessel is able to offer comprehensive military support, and the Farragut battlecruiser can do just that. In a report yesterday by Commander Driggers, Critics of the Hudson administration have commented on the decision to make use of the two Core Dynamics Farragut-class battlecruisers as presidential transport vessels. In an interview with the Federal Times, Congresswoman Christine Lasky said, These aren't industry standard ships that can be purchased on the market. These are mainline warships, the largest in the Federal Navy's inventory. That the President intends to make use of not one but two of these ships should seriously concern taxpayers. Is it necessary for the President to deploy a battle group every time he visits a foreign dignitary? What message does that send to the other heads of state? It looks less like a matter of security and more like a show of force. Congresswoman Lasky announced that she will call upon the Federal Accountability Office to investigate the acquisition and deployment cost to the taxpayer and put forward a measure to limit the President's use of the ships to a handful of occasions per fiscal year. 
Kruger 63 has announced that the galactic community has responded with surprising enthusiasm to the recent appeal from conspiracy theorist Ricardo Bentonio. Hundreds of pilots chose to support Bentonio's campaign, bringing him cartographic data so he could prove that the 29th of February 3302 was an aberrant day heralding the imminent collapse of the universe. Although no indications of universal catastrophe have been reported, Bentonio still appears to believe that the irregular day is a harbinger of humanity's impending doom. He said, It will happen. You mark my words. This day is an anomaly, and should never have been. It's the end. At the time of writing, the universe continues to exist. This report by Commander Gan of the Interstellar Press. Last night in Pelevnik, social engineers aboard a Tanner settlement debated the controversial future of Antal, birthplace of Utopia. Home to the Sim Library, Antal has become a pilgrimage for millions of Utopians, as well as attracting engineers, scientists and philosophers to its many facilities. However, as Utopia expands, increasing commercial pressures threaten the delicate balance maintained in this tranquil system. In a radical plan, Administrator Lucian Nestor proposed making Antal a secluded hermitage beyond galactic affairs. He said, Antal is Utopia's beginning, the keystone of paradise forged by the Sim Guru and his father. It must remain a system of solace and reflection, a refuge free from distractions and interruption. As Utopia grows, we must do all we can to protect this balance, and this can only be achieved through its separation from all outside influences, including Utopia itself. As the debate ended, the plans were submitted to the Sim Guru, where they await his thoughts. This report from Statera Eleshana of the Interstellar Press. Recent studies of major powers have revealed critical errors, according to the latest data analysis experts, Lux Analysis Group. Data technician Rose Draper, who led the study of galactic power activity over the past nine months, explained the think tank's findings. She said, We're seeing a lot of illogical activities going on in the major powers. Redistribution and administration seem to be particular problem areas, with contracts, aid packages and supplies going astray to the systems with no value, or worse, that are actually a drain on resources. We believe that the majority of this activity is being caused by inferior communications and substandard bureaucracy across the board. Our advice to major powers is to implement an optimized administration in order to avoid wastage of supplies and miscommunication with potential member systems. One system administrator, who wished to remain anonymous, stated, Every week we're getting overwhelming surpluses here, whilst headquarters acquires other systems into the network that are a huge drain on resources. This is costing us badly. I wish someone in charge would do something and rein in the overzealous enthusiasm of some independently contracted pilots. That's the Galnet News for today. Tune in next time to keep your galaxy in focus.